Hey, it's me, a while Katie appeared, and... Hannah! Again. Hi. Yep. Yeah, she'll basically be here for the whole Let's Play, hopefully. Probably. <laughs> Unless you do it without me. I don't think so. That's alright then. Anyway, so yes. Last time we did this, we recorded for a, a long while. Yeah, two hours. <coughs> 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 just, just, you know. Yeah. Throw that out there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Which again, I'm a weirdo and like to edit, so that was fine for me. <coughs> Sorry. Oh. I need something in my throat. <laughs> yeah. As I said, I'm a weirdo who likes to edit, so it's alright. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, basically from the last episode you guys would have seen was we had a house party whoop, whoop. with no alcohol involved uh. and then a devil attacked us. <laughs> he was on his period. Mm. And yeah, and now we've fallen asleep and now we're hearing voices. Hmm, sounds interesting. Yes. This sounds like a regular night for me. Anyways, let's get you know back. They can't see you, right? I know. <laughs> Thumbs up. They can't see you. <laughs> I know, but I I do hand gestures no matter what. Doesn't matter if they can see me or not. Okay. Anyways, let's continue. Let's play. You're so important to me. I swear I'll give my life to you. Whoa. So basically, right now we're hearing all the voices of who we can romance. Sounds creepy. Like these are all the voices of people we can romance. Yeah. So yeah. Please let me love you. No. I'll be by your side, always. That sounds creepy. That's Sam. Okay. <laughs> I can't imagine living without you. Aww. I want to be with you. Ooh. I love you. Good to know. I slowly opened my eyes, letting the voices of my, my dream echo in my head and force me awake. I rubbed my eyes before sitting up and looking at the clock. 7am? Why am I awake so early? Why are you awake so early? You're never up at 7am. I know, and it's a Sunday as well. What? You usually sleep until like 3 o'clock on a Sunday. Actually. In, in the afternoon, just, yeah, you know. Yeah. But that's because I'm like up at 3am. <laughs> yeah. I fell back onto the bed and closed my eyes, trying to go back to sleep. However, something kept me awake. Why? It's too early to even be alive. True story, bro. Yeah, that sounds like something I'd say. Sounds like something you already have said. I know. Actually, no, I usually say I wasn't aware six o'clock in the morning even existed. Oh, how did you get up for college every morning? I get up at 7.10. You lazy bugger. <laughs> well, I mean, my train's at 8, so... <laughs> no, my train's at 8.21. So, I got time. <laughs> I'm a quick dress. I can quickly tra change, have my breakfast, and leave the house. And you can eat quickly? Only in the mornings. Actually, sometimes I don't even eat in the mornings, because I just, I'm just... That's bad time. for you. Actually, some people say that they're alright with it. Some people can't even say they can't even stomach breakfast. Yeah, no, I, I'm like that sometimes as well. If it's too early, mm -hmm. but still, it's bad for you. But apparently, you function better with breakfast. Anyway, right. I gave up and sat up, staring at the fireplace across from my bed. A sigh escaped from between my lips before I threw my legs over the side of the bed. What to do at seven in the morning? That doesn't make sense. It says what to do at seven a.m. in the morning, but a.m. is morning. So technically you shouldn't have both of them. I don't know. Alright, so what are we going to do? Work on homework? No. Explore the house? Or make some coffee? Well, coffee's gross. Homework's gross. Let's explore the house. Alright, let's explore the house. I decided it was a good idea to wander around the house. I never really explored it much as a child, so there were bound to be a few surprises. Yeah, especially since we've learned that our grandfather's used magic before. Mm. Come on, feet. Let's go on an adventure. No boy. You're far too excited in the morning. I'm not usually, though. I stood and exited my room, hoping that the boys were still asleep. I began to wander the halls on my end of the house, opening each door to find out what each room led to. Quickly I found an old office. A desk and chair sat by the far side as a large bookshelf of documents and memorabilia. Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> Donned its nooks and crannies. I swear that I was about to say grannies there. <laughs> Donned its nooks and crannies. There were a couple of pictures of me growing up peeking from the shelf as I walked further into the room. I don't believe I've ever been in here before. <laughs> I tried to recall the memories of ever seeing this room, coming up with nothing as a result. This, this room is new to me. Did I want to disturb the furniture? I'm curious. Curiosity killed the cat, you know. Oh well. <laughs> I gently opened the shelves and any drawers I saw in the room. In a couple of them, 
there were books, even sewing kits. I assumed they were used for my grandfather's toys, so I left them alone. One drawer, however, was locked, no matter how many times I pulled. Maybe like, it was a fake drawer. Maybe. Like the one I have in my kitchen. I hate that drawer. <laughs> you always try to open it. I hate that drawer. <laughs> one of these days I'm going to open up. Hannah, it's a fake drawer. It's never going to open. I'm going to open up. Grr, come on, open! Alright, calm down. <laughs> Nothing. It would not budge. The drawer beside it did, though, revealing a laptop. Ooh. Free laptop, woo! Why is there a laptop in the drawer? I lifted it from the drawer and carried it over to the desk and chair, opening it. It was a high-tech laptop with a retina scanner as a pass lock. I was not sure whether or not to try and unlock it. Should we try or not? Yeah! Alright, let's go. Wee 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 wee. <laughs> I decided to try. I turned on the computer and leaned my face near the retina scanner, lining the camera up with my eye. To my surprise, I heard a ping come from the computer before the screen opened to a desktop. Ah, look at that. On the desktop were documents and folders with different aspects of the Anderson Company. Taxes, profits, bylaws, products, the list went on and on. If I really did want to become CEO of the Anderson Co Toys Company, I had everything about it at my fingertips. But I don't wanna. No, that sounds like too much like hard work. I'd rather just play with the toys. Yeah. Can I be a toy a tester? Yeah, toy tester, that sounds fun. Dad sure would be impressed. One icon, however, stood out from the rest. How do you pronounce that? Virgo? Vir Virigo? <laughs> Vir Vir Viraco? Vir whatever. Close enough. <laughs> Funny word. Yeah. I double clicked the icon, but no window came up. Instead, I heard a large click come from the drawer that was locked. Oh? Mm. Wait, so the icon. You clicked on it and it'll unlock the, the door. Well, that's some high-tech app stuff. Yeah. Maybe that's how we open my one. We need to find a secret laptop. We must lap search your house. For a secret laptop. Yeah. Bet mm. it's in the fireplace. Okay. <laughs> what the? Well, where would you hide a super secret laptop? Not in the fireplace. Why not? I don't know. No, you'd hide it under, like in the marble. <laughs> the marble probably lifts up and there's a laptop in there. Are you going to read the sentence now? No, I'm going to search that. <laughs> I slowly left my seat and walked over to the drawer, attempting to open it again. It slid open smoothly in the direction of my pulling hand. <laughs> that sounds funny. Revealing two books. One was plain. One was a plain black journal with the tie to keep it closed. The other was bound in leather with cryptic symbols all over the cover. Ooh, magic, 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 magic! I took out the journal and skimmed it through, seeing my grandfather's notes. They were detailed explanations and opinions on his findings on demon magic. Ooh, interesting. <gasps> magic, 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 magic! He really did know about magic. Mm. Well, how else would the house be protected and you also be protected? By, well, reasons. Yeah, I mean, you're protected from devils, but just not incubi. I sat down at the desk and read through the journal further, finding drawings and sketches of symbols and magic circles, each with their own different meanings and effects. It was Fascinating. Hmm. There was even a page of important spells to know. I read through them trying to memorise them into my mind. I don't know what came over me, but I started to feel more energetic and more powerful simply reading my grandfather's notes. I was suddenly aware of the energy that surrounded my body and the power that was around the house. So do we have magic now? Eww. Fun times. The more I read, the more powerful I became. However, my mind suddenly froze, and I found myself walking back to the drawer, putting the book back and closing the drawer. The lock reset, and I snapped out of it. Okay. Interesting. Hmm. Huh? What? I shook my head at, and looked at the drawer, realising what I had done. I walked over to the desk to reopen the lock, but suddenly felt the need to stop. Something held me back and didn't want me to pry any more anymore than I already had. Oh, da da da! I was curious beyond belief, but I obeyed my thoughts for now. Eventually, I would come back and look into it. Oh my goodness! <laughs> so she explores one room, and then, and then goes back to bed yes. because she's tired. Well, yeah, wouldn't you be if you just like opened a book all of a sudden? You felt like you had magic in you. I'd then... keep exploring. I'd find something else. <laughs> 
I returned to bed, feeling the weight of the morning drag me under my covers to try sleeping again. I had energy, but I wanted more sleep. It was Sunday and nothing was happening today. Fair enough. Come on, eyes. Back to sleep. I shut my eyes and tried to slow my breathing. I looked at my phone to check the time once again. It was noon, yet I felt like I'd slept for much longer. See, this is normally maybe around the time I get up. You lazy bugger. I know, but it's a Sunday. Can you blame me? You lazy bugger. <laughs> I was up at like half nine, ten o'clock on Sunday. Actually, to I be fair, I was at... right to well, Actually, I was up early yesterday because I wanted to go shopping and get some stuff. Oh, yeah, yesterday was Sunday, wasn't it? Yeah. Why is time going so slowly? Because you read the book. Bubba boy. I sighed, got changed into normal clothes, and went out to the main hall and sat on the stairs. Sundays were very boring. Depending on how you spend your Sundays. Mm Mm-hmm. Mine was fun. However, the muffled sounds of battle caught my attention. Oh? Huh? Oh, that's pretty. I quickly went out to the backyard in response to the noise I'd heard. Oh, no. (laughs) In the yard, all five boys were practicing fighting. Sam was in the middle with the other four surrounding him and throwing punches and kicks at him. Sam, being the strongest of the bunch, blocked and dodged each one almost masterfully. Are we going to disturb them or just just be like, we'll leave you boys and we'll just go do something else? I don't know. I kind of want to disturb them. So you want to... Don't disturb them or say, hey! You want to say, hey! Okay, so we're going to say hey. Nah, and they looked shocked. All at once, the boys looked at me, frozen in their movements. I just stood at the doorway, staring at them after my outburst. It was hardly an outburst, you just said hi. Yeah. James was the first to break away from the group. <gasps> Stepping towards me. Good morning. We apologise if we woke you up. It's noon, guys. You butt faces. No, no, it's fine. I've been awake for a while now. I'm sorry to interrupt. It's quite all right. We needed to stop anyway. We don't want to overwork Sam. (laughs) Oh, come on, I can handle more than those pity punches. Your mind seems grateful that we've stopped. Get the frying pan. Quick, get the frying pan. (laughs) We're not near the kitchen, though. Are you sure you can run in and get it? Probably. Shut up, Damien. Oh, crap. We should probably make some lunch. I'm sure you're starving. Mm Mm-hmm. See, he's thinking nicely. I can handle lunch if you like. You all seem very busy training to beat Malix. I'll take care of it today. Whoa, seriously? Yes, seriously. Punch him. Yeah, why not? I'm not useless. I know how to cook and do other stuff too. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I wasn't insinuating. What he means to say is that we'd be really grateful if you could make lunch today. (laughs) No problem. As I turned to the kitchen, the boys went back to training. I thought they said they were going to stop. Well, I think because we're making lunch for them, they're going to continue until we give them lunch. Fair enough. They seemed very determined to get better and to become stronger. Might as well make lunch today. It's been a while since I've cooked. Yeah. Gonna kill everybody. Lunch wasn't particularly hard. I decided to make... Right, what are we going to make? A simple chicken and rice? Pizza. Cold cut sandwiches? Or pizza. Pizza? pizza? <laughs> Is it gonna be pizza, Hannah? Pizza. Okay, we're making pizza for lunch. Pizza's always good, no matter what time of day it is. Do we have any? No. Aww. Luckily, we had some pizza in the freezer to heat up. Pizza more is baked with love pizza. Right, okay. Why can't we just get some Domino's? I don't know. I like Domino's. So do I. Had all the makings of pizza types, including pepperoni, sausage, mushrooms, and extra cheese. Ew. Just top it, bacon, and serve. I'd have to get more later. I placed the food in the dining room. However, none of the boys were there by the time I brought the final dish out. I carried that dish to the main lobby, catching the boys separating into different rooms of the house. Part of me wanted to go to one in particular. The other part of me wanted to leave them and take the food in my hand to my room and eat. Maybe I could go out today while the boys focus on training. Well, it, since we're doing Matthew's route, we gotta go find one of the incubi. Okay. I quickly rushed back and grabbed the second 
food dish before hunting down one of the boys. I looked down each hall trying to find one of the incubi wandering so that I wouldn't have to go through each individual room finding them. I pursed my lips in irritation. Where the heck are they? They disappeared into thin air. I sighed knowing that I would have to search for them in each room. I quickly turned and headed back to the dining room one last time. When I arrived, I gasped. <gasps> oh, there he is. Mm-hmm. Matthew was crouched near the kitchen door, peering into it as if a rat had gotten loose in the pantry. And he was stalking the ex- he was the stalking exterminator. <laughs> Matthew? Okay. Okay. I'm down. I quickly shut my mouth and pressed my lips together in silence, confused but fearful as to why I had to be quiet. I tiptoed to Matthew, who was crouching by the entrance to the kitchen. His gaze and head moved across the the site of the kitchen, still trying to find whatever he was looking for. He's in there. Who is? What? Matthew's face was seriously fearful and intense. Who was freaking him out this much? My mind, however, instantly pinned the person down in my conclusion. Malix. Malix, why did he come back? Why was he in the kitchen? I started to freak out, remembering the fear I had felt the first time we had met. However, I wasn't sure. Where were the others if it was if it was Malix? I lost sight of him, but I quickly found him and cornered him in there. I know he's in there. Who is in there? That fluffy killer thing. Please tell me he's not afraid of a bunny rabbit. Well, I mean, wouldn't you be scared of something that has a small knife? Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Mm, that's cute, though. But didn't we put that thing in a box? Yeah, under our bed. It was locked. How did it get out? I don't know. Did we take the knife off it? I... did we? <laughs> Fluffy. Fluffy oh. killer thing? I bit my lip and suppressing a laugh. Once I swallowed my laughter down, I let out a sigh. You mean your cute, your cute bunny doll? Yeah, that thing. Wait, is that cute? <laughs> Matthew instantly regretted not whispering, covered his mouth. I could not help but giggle. What's he doing in the kitchen? Looking for his dinner? Maybe. Matthew turned to me with an expression of utmost seriousness. Something told me that what he said would be cute and funny, but I decided to bite my tongue gently so as to not laugh no matter what. I don't know. Wow, that was cute. I failed to keep a hold of myself and started to giggle again. The thought of a doll doing anything but sitting there made me giggle. Matthew tried to hush me, waving his arms frantically to keep me quiet. Matthew, Simon's a doll. It can't do anything. You named him? You named him Simon? I'm not the one who named him. It's like whoever... Why is it, why is it called Simon? I don't know. Of course, Simon Tabby. Cute, isn't it? No. No. Matthew let out some sort of defeated twine before turning back to the kitchen, trying to find Simon from where he was. I placed our food on the table and looked as well. well what would you have named him? Not Simon. So, what's your plan of attack? Well, I plan to make my way through the kitchen as quietly as I can, and hopefully not get stabbed. Sounds like a plan. He's a bit of a wub, isn't he? <laughs> Sounds simple. Matthew nodded in agreement before finally moving from his spot and tiptoeing into the kitchen. (laughs) (laughs) Bye then! (laughs) I stood there unsure of whether or not I should follow suit. You probably should join the hunt. Yeah, probably. I didn't know why I was up for this, but I followed along. The small adventure side of me was happy with my decision, but another side of me was questioning me, asking why did I do that? So we can, so basically we can woo Matthew, that's why. Yeah, okay. Matthew slowly walked through the kitchen, scanning the cupboards and surfaces with a meticulous glare. It was both amusing and slightly frightening to see how serious he could be. Do all your toys get out of control like this? No, it's just this one. I don't know why. All my other toys are okay. Other toys? Matthew nodded, stopping his search to look at me. That's what I do. Uh, make toys. I made them for my mother all the time back in the Abyssal Plains. To help her cope with her position. Her position? She's the fourth wife of my birth father. Each of us have a different mother, and all of them, except for Damien's, are queens. My mom, though, hates sharing, so I distracted her with toys. Fair enough. I don't like sharing either. I didn't know what to say. A demon with multiple wives seems natural, but I guess because because I was human. I felt 
the twinge of disgust run through my veins nonetheless. Still, it was adorable how Massey tried to cheer his mum with his abilities. He's such a mummy's boy. I don't know, it's adorable. I was then suddenly reminded of my grandfather and how he made toys all the time for kids. Matthew's power to make small toys instantly would have been so useful to my grandfather. As long as they didn't turn out like Simon, we're all good. Yeah, he's still calling him Simon. Yes, because that's what his name is. It's weird. I shook my head and began to search for Simon again. Let's keep looking for Simon. Matthew nodded before joining in. I felt like I was in a comedy mystery looking for a child's toy instead of a murder weapon. (laughs) Come on up, creepy thing. Its name is Simon. Matthew ignored my statement and began to slowly open the cupboards, sifting through the inside contents. I decided to follow suit, starting at the opposite end of the kitchen. Matthew, what do we do if we find him? We stick him back in my pocket. And, uh... Uh... I looked to Matthew, waiting for him to finish replying. However, he kept his eyes to the ground, trying to answer my question and remaining in thought. So, you don't have a plan? Pretty much. I continued to search the cupboards, unsure of how this plan was going to go anywhere. Why was I even doing this? Simon Tabby was a... <gasps> oh, What the? Matthew and I scanned the kitchen frantically, searching for the source of the laugh. Oh, I knew that thing was evil! Suddenly, everything went black. Uh (gasps) Uh-oh. Who turned out the lights? (laughs) Doctor episode. (laughs) Who turned out the lights? It's the flash to Nevada. Run! (laughs) No? But what? Okay. Okay. (laughs) Anyway, Doctor Who referenced. Anyways. (laughs) I gripped to the nearby counter, not wanting to hit anything or fall in the darkness. There were no windows, so the room was almost completely pitch black. Why would you not have a window in a kitchen? Yeah, it seems kind of pointless, doesn't it? Mm. I could hear skittering across the floor, like a rat rushing to escape with its cheese in its mouth. I instantly jumped in fear before suddenly being pushed to the ground. <gasps> Watch out! <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I felt myself hit the ground with the body over the top of me. Two hands were slammed beside my head onto the tile floor, stopping the person above me from crushing me. Hey, are you okay? Matthew, yeah, I am. I stared up at Matthew, letting the situation sink in. We were looking for a doll, and now we were on the ground. So, cliche, guy falling over girl. Boom, boom, boom! <laughs> I want you in my room. <laughs> we're in the kitchen, that works too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What broke my thoughts was a flash of gold running across Matthew's eyes. I could feel the heat radiate from his body, but the air was tense, and his body was almost shaky. He got to tangles! <laughs> Matthew, are you okay? I... Uh, I, um... Tangles. I heard him gulp answering my question. He wasn't okay. I could tell, but he wasn't moving. Matthew? S- sorry. I, uh... Soon a golden glow covered Matthew's eyes. I expected to feel warmth in my body from an upcoming spell, but I felt nothing. Something was wrong. I... I need you to... I need you to push me off. I... uh, I... I'm kind of scared now. (laughs) From the sound of his voice, he was desperate to get up and off me. Why couldn't he move, though? That Then it hit me. Matthew, do you need energy? I... I do. But I... I know where this is going. <laughs> this is going to a not safe work area. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say exactly that, but... Well, they're in the kitchen. It's kind of unhygienic. Mm. Matthew's, Matthew shut his eyes, trying to hide his golden gaze from me. He didn't want to take my energy. Why? Was was he ashamed to? Well, Matthew doesn't seem like the type who would just take it if yeah. he... Yeah. Like, like, he's not Sam or Eric. Anyways... So we're going to push him off or kiss him? What do you think? <laughs> Duh. He needed energy and I was willing to give it. I gently grabbed Matthew's face and tilted his head to angle with mine, leaning in closer to him. I brought my face and lips up to his and kissed him deeply. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I didn't know if this would help, but it was how he got energy before. 
I shut my eyes, waiting for the draining feeling to reappear in my body. Matthew did not move, nor did I feel energy drain from me. I opened my eyes and saw Matthew staring wide-eyed at me, but unmoving. He was unsure of what to do, and I had silenced him in confusion. Whoopsies. (laughs) I pulled away and spoke. I want to give you some of my energy. You used a lot of it, and I'm sure that the energy you took from took from me was only for healing, so let me help you. I, I, uh, mean, I really, I don't. Matthew, if you don't want my energy, just tell me, but I'm offering it to you if you do. All of a sudden, I felt that familiar feeling of warmth run through my body once again. I felt my body slightly heat up as Matthew wrapped an arm around me and pulled me tighter, pulled my body tighter to his. Matthew grew a lustful gaze before bringing a hand up to cut the back of my neck. Oh, there we go. Hello. Hello. (laughs) Before I knew it, Matthew pulled me into a gentle but passionate kiss. He erupted through my body and as his kiss slowly and almost timidly got deeper, Matthew kept an arm around my waist while I rested my hands on on, on his chest. The energy from my body was slowly draining in the kiss, making me feel light and warm. It was almost pitiful how comfort, how comfortable and how willing I was in the situation. Still, I had no regrets. I was enjoying every bit of the kiss. Matthew was full of surprises. As childish as he was, he definitely was proving he was a man while kissing me. Oh my god! <laughs> how is he doing that? Wiener! <laughs> <laughs> Matthew wasn't forceful, but his kiss was deep and passionate. It almost felt magical. It was how I imagined the first kiss to be like, except with the energy drain. Soon though, the energy drain stopped and Matthew gently pulled his face away to end the kiss. I stared up at him as we both panted for air. I had never kissed like that before. I was so lost in the moment and I had forgotten how to breathe. That was kind of bad. Yeah. Matthew moved a strand of hair from my face to behind my ear, eyes still full of desire. Matthew stared silently at me, unsure of what to say. However, I could tell he was full of yearning. (laughs) That sounds so bad. Oh no, I told you. (laughs) It's very cringy. I could feel the hold on his mind altering the spell fade away. But still I felt hot. (laughs) Yeah you did. Tingles! We should be named for Tingles. Maybe. Something told me that I wanted more at Be Your Tingles. But at the same time, I wasn't sure if I truly did want to give any more. Are we going to keep going? I don't know. If we want to get... I kind of want to keep going and see what happens. Do you want to keep going? I'm far too curious. Let's keep going. <laughs> I don't know if I can read that. <laughs> you want me to read it instead? No, no, it's fine. I got it. <laughs> <clears throat> I opened the opportunity. And I was enjoying it as much as he was. I wanted more... I was going to let him keep going. I wanted to keep going. I leaned up and kissed him again. Matthew gasped against my lips, but continued to kiss back. I could feel him pull on the tail of my bow, releasing it, and following his hand off from around my neck. He moved the ribbon to his pocket before gently unbuttoning the top two buttons of my blouse. Oh, she... Dang, you work fast. <laughs> hey, boy! Foreplay! 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 <laughs> The desire of my body drove me insane, forcing a moan to escape my lips as he ran kisses from my lips down to my exposed neck. Yeah, he did! Mm. <laughs> you would not think that we were 21 year olds laughing at this! No. As he began to ravish my neck and shoulder in hot kisses, I leaned my head back and let out a pleasureful sigh. Yeah, you did. <laughs> We're 21, right? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> What's worse is that I've probably done the majority of this stuff and I'm still fucking laughing at it. Like, what even? Uh, oh no. It's bad. Matthew was ruthless in his passionate kisses on my skin. He didn't stop touching and kissing me, making... More moans and gasps rush out of my mouth into the open air. Okay, they're still in the kitchen, right? Yeah, in the dark, by the way. With a creepy thing running about. Yeah. They could stab her in the hoo-ha or cut off his wee-wee. 
<laughs> Rufflecopter. He may have been Phil, but he was as hot as I was. I couldn't even comprehend how much time we spent making out. I was lost in the pleasure that I didn't care. Call it sinful, but I didn't care. I loved it. His touch, his kiss, his heat. I desired it beyond anything at that moment. Even as he lowered his kisses down to my chest, just above my bra. Uh-oh. This shit's getting good. <laughs> <laughs> my heart was beating wildly in my chest. Something about Matthew intrigued me immensely. What is with that music? Well, it's the sexy music. <sighs> ah, okay. But something made my heart quicken for him. It couldn't have been love. It was too passionate to be lost. But it was too passionate to be lost. But what was it? Yeah, that's a good question. If it's not love and it's not lost, then what is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, I began to feel dizzy. Oh, That sucks. I know that feeling. <clears throat> However, I began to feel dizzy. Seeing the ceiling start to spin almost wildly. I gripped to Matthew's shoulder, trying to signal him to stop, but my mind faded back to black before I could let out another sound. I felt good. I didn't care that I was blacked out. I felt warm and fuzzy in the darkness. I never knew indulging in that kind of passion would be that good. I now want to wait, just wait to awaken, hopefully in a good way. My eyes eventually fluttered open, adjusting to the sight around me. I felt familiar silks underneath me, letting me, know, letting me know I was in my own bed. And they did it. They did it! No, they haven't. <laughs> I know. <'Cause, laughs> Not yet, know, anyways. You don't do it with a girl that's passed out, because that's just bad. I slowly sat up, stretching from the tiredness that still lingered. I felt a very soft pain in my neck and shoulders. <laughs> I could feel my swollen lips pulse gently and healing. Please tell me she has hickeys. That was going to be so funny. However, when I looked down at my body, I saw that my shirt had been pulled back up and rebuttoned as if nothing had happened between Ma me and Matthew. I was just missing my ribbon. Before I, turn before I turned to get out of bed, though, I spotted my ribbon on the pillow beside the one that I slept on. It was tied around Simon Tabby in an ice bowl with a small note attached to it. I gently slipped a note from the tie and opened it to read it. Wait. So you put Simon right next to us? Please tell me to take the knife off him, though. I hope so. I, I'm really, really, really sorry. I, I didn't mean for it to go that far. Please forgive me. Aww. Aww. I stared at the note, letting, letting a small smile grace my lips. He went too far. I enjoyed it a lot. It was cute, though, to imagine him thank, thanking me for something we both didn't enjoy. <laughs> I brought the note to my to chest, letting... The memories of our meeting flood my mind. She gets the tingles. I indulge myself too, Matthew. Tingles. <laughs> I looked at the time out of curiosity. The large white numbers on my phone showed 5.31pm. Damn. Oof, we dinner were, time. Yikes, we were out for a while. Yeah. Yikes, four hours of being knocked out and I still feel tired? Energy drink. Mm. It was Sunday, so I was allowed to sleep longer if I wanted to. 